All right, guys, something a little different to show you. This is my set of high performance 840s. I've probably had them for 30 years. The porting you're going to see on this was done in the 90s. It does have K lines in it. I did cut them for 219 intake and 188 exhaust. You can see the giant wide seats that I did when I was a kid. Let's see how I did. Now, this is the first set of rectangular ports I've ever flowed. And uh, you can see they got a nice deep chamber cut on the intake and the exhaust. I did it with a curved stone. That actually turned out quite nice. I just didn't blend it in perfect. But uh, I think I was toying about putting an even a bigger valve in, the, in these. Now, the reason uh, I've been saving these is supposedly this is a, a valuable uh, set of heads. I know they came on the 427, 435 horsepower Corvette engine. Okay, they had the smaller exhaust valve. I'm going to say 170 something exhaust valve. All right, they were closed chambered, rectangular ports. They made some decent power. Now, I love big blocks and I hate big blocks for a couple of reasons. Some of the things I hate about big blocks. Why is there no head bolt here? I need six, should have six around each. All right, this one actually has one, two, three, four, five. Six head bolts around it. Well, this one only has five head bolts around it. It's got nothing here. Look at the span between head bolts. Not a good design. Sorry. Sorry. Got a problem with it. This one. This is the same as the, this is the good port. This is the good port. Six, five. Right. This, they consider this the bad port. It points like small block Ford to the cylinder wall. This, they consider the good port. It aims towards the center. We did <coughs> the end port today. And as far as the liquid, I think it looks pretty darn good. I mean, considering, I mean, look at that horrendous valve job I did when I was a kid. I mean, in reality, it's not that bad. It's just really wide. Why did I use such wide seats? Because I didn't want the seats to wear out. I didn't know back then it was guide clearance that was really wearing out my, my seats. I do now. I really think it's interesting the way it hits that chamber. I mean, that chamber has been taken back quite a bit. And I think that'll, uh, that actually looks pretty good. I am going to do some work to these. The reason I even have them out is I've got a customer that's got a 38-foot boat with twin 565 big blocks. He's got a set of AFR heads that uh, Eric Weingartner fixed up for him. He's sending me the flow numbers that Eric got. So basically what I'm doing is I'm putting this, this on to get a comparison. That way I have something I can bolt that intake to. Now, because they're 90s porting, I'm pretty sure I can get a few more CFM out of them with what I know today. I mean, the intake valve, I don't, do not think it's a, I don't think it's a good uh, brand intake. It doesn't have any numbers on it. The exhaust looks like a good intake valve, like a Manly or something. It has numbers on it. But it's hard to read. Maybe because I'm old. But I think that's a good exhaust valve. So that's what I have for, for these heads. As you can see, the intake does not have a back cut. It kind of looks like a back cut, but it's not. You can just see the really wide seat on it. You can see the really wide seat on that exhaust. Those will get worked on, no doubt. The uh, guide clearance looks pretty good on them the way they are right now, so I'm pretty happy about that. I don't have to bang out the liners and redo them. 
These actually have bronze wall liners inside the iron liners that GM put in. Okay, 90s porting. You can see uh, the really rough texture I was using even way back then. You can see there is a head bolt. There is a head bolt here. Right. So that's what this bulge in the port here is. I'm sure I could do better than that. But that... The boss on the ceiling for the rocker stud. I know I've seen that machined out a lot, but I'm gonna think long and hard about pulling that out. Remember, this is the this is the good port. This one should flow more than the other port. Do you want them as even as possible, or do you want two out of the four ports to flow a lot better? I know what I think about. Yeah, that's the other thing I don't like about big blocks is they, you know, they, they Siamese the ports here so the intake manifold has similar length runners. But when they put the different ports in, these are different length. They're certainly going to have different swirl because they're aimed, they're aimed in, in the chamber at a different angle. So I'm sure they're going to have different swirl. Now, do I think the swirl, according to my old port stuff I did, the swirl wasn't that different. Not as ra radical as you would have expected it to be. Uh, come on, you can do it. There you go. Actually, that chamber liquid doesn't look bad. Let's do the bore before I forget. Okay, not, not a huge amount on the bore, some speckling. Most of it hit the chamber. Okay, obviously I didn't do the best job cleaning this out. It still has some some dust on it from when I magged these, God knows how long. Probably when I got my Magnaflux in the kit, which is a long, long time ago. <laughs> so these have sat around literally for decades, not being nothing happening to them. All right, from this angle, that exhaust port doesn't look too bad. I had at least an idea of how to shape that. You can see the bottom cut is kind of irregular and all over the place. But that's easy enough to fix. It'll be interesting to see how thick these are. I really do not like the big block Chevy exhaust port at all. It's way too big and way too slow to make an efficient exhaust port. really don't like how they did it. Okay, this is the good port. You can see, I remember reading that they were really thin on the short side radius. So it doesn't look, I can see I did just a little bit of, a little bit of work to that, but not much. And uh, all of them have uh, that big lip, that big cut still on the bottom. Okay, big block Chevy, basically a huge port. I don't think I changed the, the size or the shape of that outlet at all. I don't even see much, I don't, doesn't look like I touched the short side at all on these. Not a great job, you know. This is another thing I don't like about big block Chevys. That bolt boss goes right into the exhaust port. At least they they spread the exhaust ports like a small block Ford. That's that was a step in the right direction. Okay, the short side radius on that exhaust is pretty horrendous. It looks like I just took the edge off the top. You got to remember this is probably 20 years before I owned a decent Sonic. Maybe more than that, so I was afraid of breaking through the castings. And I'm not used to having, you know, a casting that's actually worth a few bucks. Usually all my stuff is junk. But this view doesn't look that horrible. You can still see I took a lot, a lot of metal out of this boss here, but it does get thin. And this is another, this is another exhaust port. 
This one's done with a much finer finish than the one we tested today. I didn't realize it was uh, in different steps of completion. Actually, take a look at this one. Mm -hmm. This one's still rough cutted. So I was in the midst of figuring them out. Okay, so I had to put in my bore adapters that Brian made me up. And then I, the only head gasket I could find was a 502 head gasket. So I had to figure out where to put my bolt holes and stuff. And I set that up. I did not use the 502 head gasket. I put some duct tape on my spacer plate to seal and it's sealed up just fine. So this is what we've got for our 90s ported rectangular port heads. They don't look bad, but we're also looking at, we're used to looking at small block stuff. I know I have some oval port stuffs that would beat up on this pretty bad. But they've had a lot of hours in them. So, I don't know what they're supposed to flow, but remember these have already had a decent amount of chamber deshrouding. And I did rough out the port a decent amount. So I wouldn't expect them to be stock numbers. I would expect them to be quite a bit better than that. So it's a 2.19 intake, no back cut. And as far as 300, 205.9 is fair for, you know, a big valve. These numbers on the left are the AFR numbers from uh, Eric Weingartner's bench. To the cylinder heads that are actually going to be on the engine. So, at least I can get an idea, right, how far off these heads are when I put an intake manifold on them. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to improve these numbers, and I'm sure I'll do the exhaust as well, but I don't, I'm only doing an intake manifold for the man. As far as our swirl numbers, really not terrible. We're on 600 lift, 1680 is is actually quite good. I would like I would like that number actually. And at 325, you know, it's an easy 600 horsepower just the way they they are. I would think. Take a quick look at our uh, our air speeds, right? The pinch is slow cuz the pinch is massive. Okay? Rectangular port, it's huge. Center of the the center of the cylinder, the roof roof speeds are fair. You know, they're not bad. They're not very far apart. They're actually fairly good. And our speeds across the short side are not super high. And they're relatively even. So, even though it's a 90s porting job, that's not really finished. It's... I don't think it's that bad a job. I think they would have run pretty good. The exhaust is pretty sad because it's massive and it really doesn't flow much. Even when you put a pipe on it, right? 219 and 223. That's what a two inch pipe. You need a two inch pipe to cover the massive exhaust that's on here. So I'm going to do a little modern work on this. Not that that has any, anything to do with this job that I'm working on. But I do want to do the same thing with uh, the short port. This is considered the long port or the good port. I'll do the same thing on a short port. That way I can test on the intake manifold how much of a loss we're going to get. Remember, the intake manifold is going to be a performer RPM air gap. He's going to send me a couple spacers. I told him not to send his very expensive carburetors. We'll have to get by with my 770, even though his carburetors will be much bigger. We'll figure it out. Uh, you might as well take a quick look at our exhaust speeds. Really, in the big scheme of things, it's really not that bad. I mean, yeah, it's completely dead in the middle, and, but it's relatively even side to side throughout the port. It only starts working, and I think all these numbers are at 600 lift. Right, the exhaust port really doesn't... It's really not good anywhere. For, for, the, for its size and a 188 valve, that can be improved a huge amount. All right, guys. So, little rectangular port, big block stuff. I know the guys that love big blocks aren't going to like my comments, but sorry, guys. They're coming from an engineering point of view. Not that I'm an engineer. 
because I'm not. I should have taken those courses. I didn't. Just my opinion. I know big blocks can make nice power. I've even built quite a few of them, actually. They all ran... The owners always loved them. Love them. From uh, jet boats to monster trucks to... Blazers. I built several. I built several big blocks. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.